Hi, and welcome to today's um, live uh, coding video. Um, I'm going to start off with a video where we're not going to do live coding. I wanted to kind of give the background of what it is we're trying to do so that you understand uh, where we're going and what, what the changes are. So um, if we look at uh, Jenkins, we've got different kinds of jobs. We've got um, your standard freestyle project, which is the original kind of job that you had in Jenkins. You've got um, the new kind of way of doing things, which is called pipeline. And then when you work in a bit further, you, you have this kind of multi-branch uh, pipeline. And, and that allows you to have a kind of a way of working whereby every time you go and you create a, a, a branch, it's going to go and automatically create a job for that branch. So if you look here, this is a, a folder. Uh, it's, a, it's based off of a particular repository. And every time I create a branch in that repository, it's going to automatically create a branch job for that repository. Um, and, and it will then tra track that branch. And so that get, allows you to, as you create branches and as you destroy branches, you get the history of uh, that branch and you get a job for that branch. So it's, it's really good where you're, you're creating branches. And with GitHub and Bitbucket and that, you also get pull requests. So that's that one, so that's the multi-branch. And then there's one level up from that, which is called the organization folder typically. And, and so on my instance here, you can see I've got a number of different organization folder installed. I've got one for a Gitia plugin, I've got one for GitHub, and I've got one for a Bitbook team project. So they're all kind of organization folders is, is what they're kind of called. And if we look at, for example, here's a Gitia one. So what I've got here is I've got this organization there and I've said I'm the owner. And so if I were to wander off to my Gitia server uh, and let's log in. Let's do, um, so I can go and create a repository I'm going to create it uh, R and um, just create a file. Um, okay. I'm just going to create this and then I'm going to create a file. I'm going to call it Jenkins file. And I commit that directly to the master branch. So I've created that, and now if we go back to here, um, and if I scan the organization, so that's webinar, and you can now see I've automatically got this webinar, and it's automatically gone and discovered that mass branch. So that's kind of how the, the organization folder works. I didn't have to go and create the job. It went and did it automatically for me. And even more, if let's just delete this. So I don't want this. Let's delete this repository. Webinar, scan deletion. And then we go back over here. And if we scan the organization again, It's now actually gone, that one's gone, and the reason why it's gone to that strange little folder is we've said keep it for around for one day. So it's going to keep that around for one day just in case there was a mistake in deleting it, and then if it got recreated it will continue with the history. Or I can go in here, and at this point I should be able to delete it once we've got the appropriate bits done. But anyway, um, slight tweaks with the Gitia plugin. Um, now, uh, the Maven project itself, um, it's not just one repository. So one of the things that you tend to find is it's usually best to keep things in a separate repository if they have a separate release lifecycle. When things are released together, you kind of want them in one repository. If they're released separately, you want them in separate repositories. So if we look at Maven itself, there's actually a lot of projects that are part of Maven. 
right? So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 kind of things. But, you know, it's not just 15 because you've got like shared components, which would all have uh, independent release life cycles. And you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, um, over 20 shared components. And then if we go and we look, so there's also plugins. So there's plugins which are managed by the Maven project, um, such as clean, compiler, deploy, and so on. And you can see we've got another 20 or 30 or so um, plugins. Um, and then there's retired ones, and then there's ones which don't belong to the Apache Maven project and other people do. But ideally, as we move source control or as, as we're dealing with all these, we've got all these different projects that we want to manage. And right now, um, what we have in the Apache Maven on the Apache build server is people have gone and created jobs for every single one of those components that they need to. Now, that's a lot of work that we've had to do. That's a lot of jobs that have to be maintained. Um, it can be kind of tricky to know what's what. So we've been conducting some experiments and we've, for example, we've created a pipeline multi-branch here um, for Maven itself. And, and so that one goes and it, you can see, um, if the build server comes along, um, you can see that it's gone and it's, it's picked up all that multi-branch and it's given us, yes, would happen uh, during a recording. Um, and this is live, so of course stuff goes wrong. So what we've got on the Apache side is Apache um, for the policies of Apache, Apache has to host its own source code. Now, that doesn't mean we can't have mirrors at, like GitHub, but uh, uh, the canonical repositories are all hosted on Apache-owned hardware. Um, there's two Git repository servers that Apache uses. There's an original one uh, called Git WIP, and there's a new one which is called Git Box, and Git Box has the advantage of a better integration with GitHub. So it, it kind of makes life easier for us. And, and we can see here, we've got some Maven repositories here, and we've got some Maven repositories over here. And so what we really want to be able to do is rather than go and manually create these jobs for every repository and have to configure them and copy things, it would be much nicer if we could just have Jenkins discover those repositories for us. And you start looking at this and you say, well, how could we discover this? Well, we could scrape the HTML or there's even down here a little text output called project index that actually even just gives us a much nicer format. It's the name of the repository space and then the Apache Software Foundation. And you know what? Gitbox uses the same Git web interface which means we have the exact same project index and again you can see there it is that so what we'd ideally like to do is we'd like to just scrape those files and then walk through and find all the repositories now there is actually the functionality is available for that in um, the what's called SEM API which is the API that we've added which enables multi-branch so in traditional Jenkins, you had this SCM interface and that is attached to a specific job and it's supposed to check out the source for that job. What we did in the SCM API is we said, well, okay, there's different revisions of source and there's different kind of heads. So you have branches, you have tags. What people call them is different. Some people will call them streams. Some people will call them heads and different source control systems will call them different things. So we, we picked um, the name head so that people wouldn't just think of it as a branch. Um, and then we've got revision, which is revision. And then we use an SCM source, which is responsible for discovering heads and the corresponding revision. So there's in here, there's a method called um, fetch, and that is a head observer, and it takes a particular criteria, the observer, and so on and so it will go and it will walk through all the heads um, and call the observer 
and let the observer do stuff. And then the other thing that you can do further down here is build. So you can take a head and a revision and build an SCM. So what we do in the multi-branch uh, job type is we configure the SCM source and then we discover all the heads and then for each one we create a job and we populate that job with the SCM. And, and that gives us the multi-branch functionality that we saw before where we get all these branches or if we look here, here's all the branches on the Apache Maven project and you, so you can see various different branches as they've been discovered and if we wander back here. So this is Maven and so you'll see here are the different heads that we've got and so what it's done is for every one of those, sorry, it's gone and created and done a separate build with the corresponding build status for that particular branch. And this allows us to develop a particular fix on one branch. We get this continuous integration reporting on that. Then when we merge that branch in and delete the branch, this job gets automatically cleared away. And so we don't have cruft on our Jenkins uh, server. So what we want to do is we want to have some way of getting multiple SCM sources. And that's the job of this SCM navigator. So an SCM navigator will go and create, a, allow you to discover SCM sources. Now it works slightly different from the way SCM source works, but the idea is basically you pass it, uh, you tell it to visit the sources and you give it an observer and that observer can then go and create projects uh, for each multi-branch projects for each uh, source that's been discovered. So what we're really wanting to do is to go and take that text file and for every one of those we want to actually just go and visit and, and that's basically what we want to do. So the next part is I'm going to take us through how we go and implement that and then subsequent uh, video episodes I intend on basically working on allowing us to improve the performance and, and make it a much nicer experience. So that's kind of basically what we want to do.